What's up guys, Silky Crisp here, and I've been doing nothing but movement training over the last few weeks, and I feel like my aim has taken off with an apex. I feel like I'm much more consistent, and I'm actually much better at strafing and dodging within apex. So what are movement scenarios? They're basically, you're gonna move while you shoot. It's really that simple. I've got almost 700 hours into Kovacs at this point, and most of that time has been me just sitting still and, and aiming, and I feel like this has been a, a key part of aiming that I've missed. So if you guys play Apex or Quake or any game where you're moving a lot while shooting, I would suggest really taking some time to do some movement playlists like this. Um, and I'm gonna quickly show you how I practice this playlist. This is optional, and I'll show you a little few different variations that you can try to help improve uh, your movement shooting. So this playlist I've got basically close, mid to long range, some high ground, some low ground, and some clicking scenarios. And I'll just quickly run through what I would want you to focus on. This is what I've been doing uh, to get better at each scenario. So first, we get into pull long dodge. This one, I just want you to just mix in different types of strafes and get used to staying on target while moving and kind of get a feel for how much you have to move your mouse while moving while strafing in different directions. Try long strafes, short strafes, getting close to the target, away. This is just a way to warm up your aim and get used to moving and shooting at the same time. So do that for a full minute. You can, if you want, try to go for a high score in these scenarios. I don't think that going for a high score in movement scenarios is really important. I really don't because if I were to get a high score in this scenario, I would only strafe once this bar filled up. And you can even set up a sound that tells you when to strafe and it'll beep and then you can go, okay, time to strafe. And this is how you would actually play the scenario if you're trying to get a high score. I think that that's, it's fine if you want to train that way, but in general, I think just turn this movement bar off and try to uh, you know, be as unpredictable with your movement as possible while playing these scenarios. Don't worry about your score, just practice your movement. Okay, the first scenario that I have on here is close long strafe, and this is just to get used to three different types of strafe patterns, okay? So you can see that I've got these listed at three times per each that we want to play these. The first time that we play it, I want to mirror the target. So that means I'm going to strafe the same direction as the target. So if he goes left, I go left. If he goes right, I go right. It's pretty simple. And you basically want to lock on your crosshair on the target and then don't move your crosshair. You know, once it's on target, don't try not to move. Try not to move your mouse at all if you can. So there's kind of a, a way that you aim where if you're going to the right, you're going to snap to the right, snap to the left, snap to the right, snap to the left. This is kind of how it should look. It's a little different aiming style than maybe you've seen, but you basically just mirror the opponent, if that makes sense. Okay, the second time that you go through this scenario, anti-mirror, so it's the exact opposite. If he strafes left, I go right. If he strafes right, I go left. And I'm basically trying to do the opposite. Or I try to move in an opposite direction and you'll see that like I have to continuously track the target and keep moving my mouse as I do this and it's a little bit different than mirroring so in mirroring you go like this you basically snap in the direction that you're strafing and then you don't move your mouse afterwards while anti mirroring it's it's kind of a figure eight pattern where you snap in the opposite direction and it should kind of look and feel like this Okay, this is the, the way that I typically like to play most uh, gunfights, is I like to anti-mirror against my opponent. It's just something that I've naturally done, and I think that uh, I'll go through quickly at the end here when to use each of these aiming styles in-game. Okay, but the third time through, what we want to do is just play this and try to be as unpredictable as we can, you know, with our strafe pattern. So try to do long strafes, short strafes, you know, stop, stop and go, quick little... You know, just try to be as random as you can, and then you'll notice that certain times while you're fighting this guy, you're going to be mirroring him, and so you don't really need to move your mouse that much. And then at other times, you're going to be anti-mirroring, which means you're just moving in the opposite direction, and you're going to need to be continuously tracking. So you kind of just try to recognize these little points where, like, okay, I'm, I'm mirroring right now, I'm anti-mirroring, and you'll get a feel for, you know, when this is actually happening in-game. And it, I think it really just makes conscious the strafe pattern of your target and also your own movement and it really just dials in like it makes it very obvious how you need to aim in each situation so that you know at that point it just comes down to mouse control and then reactivity whether or not you're gonna you know make be uh, successful in your gunfight 
Okay, so when do you want to use each of these in game? So and typically if you're mirroring someone, you're trying to maximize the amount of damage that you're doing because it's much easier to aim while mirroring because you don't have to move your mouse as much. Okay, you want to do this if you feel like the enemy is at a disadvantage. So you have a higher health pool or you have a better gun for this range that you're playing at or whatever reason, maybe it's you and one other teammate both shooting at him at the same time for whatever reason you feel like you're gonna kill this guy quicker than he can kill you okay I don't typically like to use this uh, tactic when playing apex just because if the enemy is a controller player they can actually just shred me because as soon as a controller player gets on the target they're gonna be able to hit almost every bullet and if you're strafing the same direction as them then you're not gonna break their aim assist they're always gonna have aim assist and you might miss a couple bullets but they're not so in general, I don't like to mirror when uh, there's a possibility that my enemy has a, a controller with aim assist because they're just probably going to win that gunfight. But again, if you're at a really big advantage over them, then it makes sense to just try to maximize your damage output and uh, mirror them. Typically, I like to anti-mirror just because it takes more mouse control. And so I'm typically probably going to have better aim than my opponent. So I want to take advantage of that. I've got 700 hours of aim training, so I'm going to use it. And it's a little bit harder to control or aim while anti-mirroring because you have to continuously track the target. You have to keep moving your mouse. And the reason that I also like to anti-mirror is it will actually break controller player's aim assist because you're maximizing the distance between uh, the targets and you're actually maximizing the amount of speed that's kind of different between the targets, right? So if a, a controller player gets off of target, then they lose their aim assist, and so you can actually beam them as a mouse and keyboard player. So that's why I typically like to play like this, because I don't know if they're controller player or not. It also maximizes my damage still, because I'm consciously aware of how the enemy is, is strafing and then how I'm also strafing. And so it just makes things a little bit easier in my mind. I understand what's going on. So I, I like to anti-mirror, but if the opponent is strafing for a really long time left or right, and they're not changing directions like at all, then you basically both have really bad movement. And so what I like to do is if I notice that I'm strafing for too long of a time, then I'll throw in little stop and goes, little short strafes just to try to throw them off, but I'm still in general anti-mirroring. So that's how I typically play most gunfights. If you watch some of my clips or you watch me on Twitch, I basically do long anti-mirror uh, strafe patterns and then we'll throw in little dodging patterns here and there. Now, when you want to be as unpredictable as possible is if you're at a disadvantage and you need to make something happen. So you're basically trying to make yourself as hard to hit as possible. You're trying to minimize the amount of damage that you're going to take and you're hoping to get kind of lucky that you're just able to, to beat them with raw mouse control and reactivity and just get a few lucky shots off, right? Now, this is the way that I think most people just play the game is to play as unpredictably as possible. And I think it will actually work as well so you don't necessarily need to do that mirroring or anti-mirroring but since i've started uh consciously mirroring and entering anti-mirroring my opponents i've noticed in game these these little situations crop up where i'm like okay i should probably mirror him right now or anti-mirror or i need to be unpredictable so i think it's just an extra little kit in your tool bag and again even if you're being unpredictable at any moment you're mirroring or anti-mirroring your opponent so again i think it's uh, useful to practice each of these strafe patterns uh, separately so anyways that is uh what you're gonna do for each of these playlists or each of these challenges so i have them listed three times each now when you're clicking against someone in a pistol strafe or this close uh, man wing scenario right here there's a different technique that you can also use so it's very it's valid to just try to track your opponent mirror him anti-mirror or be unpredictable that's a very valid way to, to try to click what you can also do is try to move your mouse a little bit less and then use your movement to kind of to try to basically cross over the target and then only click when you're about to cross over the target so you're not moving your mouse that much what you're doing is you're actually using your movement to help you aim and then you're just trying to time your click so that's another extra technique that you can use while clicking is to just try to use your movement to help you aim without having to move your mouse a whole bunch okay and uh, the last one I think this is a very important one to do is this close fast strafe style this is really gonna help you with shotgun shots and it's a very very difficult scenario I have a really bad accuracy with this but the more you miss the better you're gonna get so 
Again, don't worry about your score. Just focus on trying your best and over time you're gonna get better. Cool, and then this last scenario is just kind of for fun. You can do whatever you want. You can mirror, anti-mirror, whatever you want. Be un unpredictable as possible. It just gives you some different looks. The bots will spawn up here. They'll spawn to the left, the right. Sometimes they'll go up and down the stairs. So you get a little bit extra action uh, in this room here. And you can see it's actually like a two minute long scenario. So that's why we only play it once. So anyways, that's what I've been doing for the last month or so, three weeks or so. And I feel like my aim has taken off with an apex. I feel much more consistent. So I hope you guys try this out and it improves your gameplay. Um, if you enjoy the video, please drop a like, uh, follow me on Twitch and, uh, thanks for watching guys. Peace out.